Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ben here, and welcome back to a hands-on introduction to computer programming. This is episode 5, and in today's episode, we're going to be looking at loops, so making uh, repetitive steps a little bit easier, a little bit less frustrating to write, and a little bit less time-consuming to write as well. Actually, quite a bit less uh, time-consuming to write. So, uh, in the last episode, we talked about arrays and how those work and what those are and how they're used. And those are kind of an important uh, part uh, to loops. So we're going to be using those uh, later on in this video. Okay, so there are four loops that we need to worry about. There is a while do loop, a do while loop, and then a for loop and a for each loop. And we'll be talking about all four of those loops, as well as the two statements that are involved with uh, loops. So the first type of loop that we're going to be looking at is the while do loop. Now the while do loop is also just called the while loop, and it does probably exactly what you would expect it to do. It runs through a block of code uh, while a condition is met. So basically, uh, remember the if statements, um, it will just run a block of code for as long as that if statement uh, is true. You can think of it that way. So the way that we would open up a while loop is, well first first we would need to have a condition and usually uh, people use what is called a counter variable which is just a counter and usually it is an integer. Um, there are other kinds of loops out there that don't use uh, counters but in our case we're just doing a simple loop so we're just going to uh, use a counter here and usually they call the counter C. Sometimes they'll call it I as well, and you'll see that more in for loops than while loops. But okay, so we get our uh, condition uh, variable set up here. So we're going to do int C, and we're just going to set it to 0. And we want this uh, loop to run until it goes from 0 to, let's say, 5, for example. So what we can do is do while and then in parentheses we would put our condition so while c is less than or equals to 5 and we're gonna open up a code block here and uh, in our case we're just gonna print out whatever c is so c and l now the thing with the while loops is you have to increase the counter variable in the loop otherwise you're gonna get stuck in what's known as an infinite loop and that while you can use infinite loops um, in, in some situations, for example, games, I use a lot of infinite loops, um, but generally you're going to want to avoid those. So I'm just going to increase C by 1. So I'm going to go ahead and save that out, compile it, and run it. And we can see that we count from 0 to 5, just like that. So that's a simple uh, while loop. A do while loop is a little bit different, and it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. It runs through the code one time before checking the condition. And then if the condition is met, of course, it runs through it again until the condition, well, isn't met. This can be useful if you want to always make sure that something is run once, or if you're initializing a variable inside of the loop. So here's an example of a do while loop. Well, actually, why don't we, we're going to, write it out as a, a while loop first, a normal while loop. So we're going to say while c is less than 0. And if we run this, you can see that it doesn't do anything. But if we convert this into a do while loop, so do, and then while c is uh, less than 0, fix my spacing there, see how it's and I'm not going to put an increase on that because I don't really need to. You can see it runs it one time this time around because it runs this first. Whoa, okay, there we go. It runs this first and then it checks the condition. The next kind of loop is a for loop. Now I pulled our while loop back up here um, because it, it's a for loop is very similar to a while loop, but it just kind of condenses all of these steps onto one line, except for, of course, whatever we're doing inside of the loop. So the way that a for loop works is you would do, instead of while, you would do for. And then inside of the, or, uh, yeah, parentheses, 
you would first initialize your counter variable, so int c equals zero. You have to make sure that you are giving the value here. And then you would put a semicolon, and then you would have your condition, so c is less than zero. And then you would put whatever action you take at the end of the loop's run. So in this case, it's going to be C++. So now what we can do is just get rid of this, and we can get rid of this. Now I'm also going to change this condition to less than or equal to 5. Compile, and run that, and you can see it works just like our while loop, except everything is pretty much on one line. And our last kind of loop is a for each loop. Now a for each loop takes an array, so in this case I have an integer array called ints, and it has a couple of values here, 4, 8, 6, 3, and it will run through each value or each element in this array and work on that element um, as it goes through, and it will loop throughout any length of an array, so you don't have to worry about array length in that case. So to set up a for each loop, we would actually just use the for statement again, but this time in parentheses, what we're going to do is we're going to have a variable, we're going to initialize a variable that will be the placeholder for each element in our array, so we're going to say int, let's say i, for example, and then we're going to have a colon as opposed to a semicolon, and then the name of our array, so ints. And then in the body of our loop, uh, we're just going to do whatever we want with this uh, value. So in this case, we're going to reference it as the value i, or the variable i. So I'm just going to see out i. So if I compile and run that, you can see it prints out every element in our array. So 4, 8, 6, and 3. Now there are two statements that have to do with loops specifically. There's a break statement and there is a continue statement. So these two kind of do similar but not exactly the same thing. A break loop completely halts out of a loop, just breaks out of the loop and moves on, while a continue statement will break out of that current run of the loop and go back to the beginning and keep going in the loop until the loop is finished or until it finds a break statement. So we're going to be using that just in this for each loop here. So we're going to put a little if statement here. Let's say if uh, if i is, we're going to check and see if it's 8. And we're just going to do a break statement. And then we're going to put c out uh, i. And actually I'm going to change this to 6. There we go. And now if we run that, you can see that it prints out 4 and 8, but not 6 or 3, because it sees this if statement, sees that i is in fact 6, and breaks out of the loop. Now if I change this to a continue statement, what we'll see is that it prints 4 and 8 and 3, but not 6, because it sees this if statement, sees that i is 6, then sees the continue statement, and just cuts out of this run of the loop, goes back to the beginning, and in this case it sees 3, this isn't true, so it just moves on to the see out statement. So that's what a break and continue statement do. Finally, I want to illustrate loops in Python. So in Python, there are effectively only two loops out of the four that we just talked about. There's a while do loop, and there is a for each loop. So you can kind of hack both of these into making a do while and a normal for loop, but uh, by default, all we have is a while do and a for each. So let's just use those. So we're going to have our, we're going to do a, a while loop first. So we're going to have our counter variable, and I'm actually going to name this C. And then the syntax is very similar to C++, so it's going to be uh, while C is less than or equal to 5. We're going to print out C. Whoop. And of course, you got to make sure that you don't get stuck with that infinite loop. There we go. 0 to 5. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about the for each loops in Python. So here I have an array of integers here. It's uh, 3, 8, 4, 2 in this case. And to do a for each loop in Python, it's just 4, and then the variable, the placeholder name for each of the elements. Usually people will use each. I 
don't really know why because it just kind of makes the code kind of confusing so I'm just going to do uh, for i in ints and then I'm just going to print out i and there we go 3842 now the break and continue statements both work in Python so if uh, i equals 4 we're going to break otherwise print i there we go, 3, 8, or continue, 3, 8, 2. So that's how that works in Python. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about functions, finally. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for that, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.